give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. I said, the Lord will speak to you this morning. That the Lord will send your own word to you this morning. The Bible says, our possible, our right word. There is a word for the moment. There is a word for this hour. Lord, send me my own word. Jehovah, send my own word to me this morning. Lord, we ask, oh God, let your word come with power this morning. Thank you, Father. Let's serve your name, O Lord. In Jesus' matchless name, we are praying. Father, our garden this morning is unto you. Address the situations of our life. Let your word come with power. Let every force entering our marital breakthrough be destroyed. Let it be a new beginning for everyone. Give every home stability. In the name of Jesus Christ. And for those believing you for settlement, maritally, set to everyone. In Jesus' matchless name, we are praying. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Hallelujah. And please be seated. Praise the Lord and more than a conqueror. Congratulations. This service is your service. God has called it a marital breakthrough service. Therefore, it shall be so for you in Jesus' name. Praise the name of the Lord. Just a quick reminder, we have heard about Wolfby. Um, Wolfby is a good foundation for any destiny. Hallelujah. It is not something to wave away. It doesn't happen every time. Take advantage of it. If you have not picked a form, get there, pick, pick a form. And then come and enjoy God's blessings through his word. Pastors will be coming from different stations to be a blessing to us. And it will be good for you to be there. And I see God transforming your life for good in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So by 8 a.m. tomorrow, the induction begins. Praise God. No one is expected to come late. Come with your Bible. Come with your writing material. It's not church service. Amen. You write. You write. You put the things down and then you begin to run with them. And I see God giving you a glorious destiny. In Jesus' mighty name. This will be, shall be your own will be. Praise the name of the Lord. Now the prophetic focus of the month has been world practice secures profitable living. World practice secures profitable living. And we say if profit is your desire, then the practice of his word is the command. If you want to enjoy the profitability of scriptures, you must do the word. Meaning that the word is not yet potent until somebody put it to work. Nothing's happened with the word without action. It is your action, relevant action, concerning what you have heard from God's word that brings you to your level of change of story. Somebody is changing story in Jesus' mighty name. Now, the teaching series have been unveiling our breakthrough heritage in the world. Unveiling our breakthrough heritage in the world. That has been our series since the month began. And this is part three. Praise God. Let me begin by saying that the world is loaded with treasures. But it demands our action. It is loaded with treasure but requires our action. That the world is the operation manual of God. Everything he does is according to his word. He began with his word, he must continue with his word. If you must enjoy anything from God, you must practice his word. And I pray that God will give everyone the grace to begin to practice the word of God. The word is your operation manual that will prevent you from malfunctioning in life. Hear this. It's like electronics. When you buy a TV, you buy a TV that you don't know how to operate. You need to check the manual. If not, you will soon malfunction. Any electronics you have that you don't know. I remember those days we used to have so many of such electronics that is written in um, Chinese language. <laughs> so if you don't know the sign for play, you will not know where to play. Now, if you don't know how to operate it, it will end up malfunctioning. That is how life is. The word of God is a manner of life. If life will function well for you, you must know what is written in it for you. 
So all through the months, we have been looking at what the word of God has said concerning you and I. What is God saying concerning you and I? Particularly, who am I? In the sight of my creator. Because man can suggest anything. Man can think anything concerning me. But what is God saying concerning me? And we have been looking at the word of God, which is a mirror. Looking at our breakthrough heritage from the middle of his word. Remember the anchor scripture in James chapter 1, beginning from verse 22, the Bible says, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. He said, For if any be a doer of the word, and not a, a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he behold himself and go his way and straight away forget that what manner of man he was. But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continue therein, take note, continue therein, not for a while, continue therein. No wonder the Bible says that we are changed into the same image from glory to glory. So if you continue to look into it with intention to do what he says, you begin to change from glory to glory. Somebody's life is changing from glory to glory. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. He said, he be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This man shall be blessed in his deeds. You want to be blessed? Then the secret of your blessing is, is in God's word. The mirror humbles you and exposes you to you. The mirror of God's word humbles you and exposes you to you. It tells you what you should be that you are not. It tells you on what you should do that you are not doing. Number two, the mirror of his word boosts your confidence when you are on track. The mirror of God's word boosts your confidence when you are on track. And I made an example in one of the Sunday services. How you look at the mirror and then you begin to have some posture. It helps you to show that no, you are fine. And then when you think you are fine, you begin to walk fine. And behave fine like what you saw from the mirror. Many have not looked at the mirror so they have inferiority complex. They have not looked at the mirror, they think they are second class human beings. They have not seen who they are according to the mirror of God's word and they live their life less than what God expects for them. But I pray that as you continue to see through the power of love liberty, you begin to walk out of every shame and struggle. In the name of Jesus Christ. So we are looking at what is God saying that I am. Because he made me and he said he made me in his image. It doesn't matter what you are passing through right now. God said he had made you in his image. Knowing what manner of man you are determines what manner of blessing you command. Knowing what man, manner of woman you are determines the manner of blessing you command. If you don't know who you are, you will behave less than what God has called you. Now, who are we according to the word of God? Four of them this morning again. Number one, we are redeemed as stars, not failures. You are redeemed by God as stars. Redemption means salvation. Meaning he saved you and has made you as stars. Studio, please help me. The volume is getting lower. Praise God on the altar. We are redeemed as stars, not failures. That is who you are. In God's agenda for you, you are not to be a failure. You are a star. Tell yourself I'm a star. You are not saying like you understand. <laughs> it doesn't matter what anyone tells you that you cannot. You need to just tell them you can. Because God said you can do all things. You are a star. Don't allow exam tell you who you are. That was examination set. In fact, most examination they said, they said intentionally for you not to go through it. Because they feel if you pass too much, they will say the teacher well, collected money or is careless. Exams don't call, don't define you. That's why third class in life can employ first class tomorrow. 
I'm not saying you should fold your hands and not pass exams. I'm just telling that that examination script you saw, that result is not you. It's an incident. So that you score distinction does not mean you'll be distinguished in life. That you score distinction in an examination, you know now, you know what I'm talking about. How many of you have scored A before? Uh-huh. Even in mathematics, and then you still go to give change and give it wrongly. Am I correct? Uh-huh. <laughs> Don't allow society to define you. You might not be doing well now. It doesn't mean you won't do well later. You are a star. That is what God has called you. Don't allow man to name you. Maybe somebody will look at your face. Out of ignorance. It could even be your wife or your husband. He said, what are you good for? You are good for nothing. Wait and see something. Just know what God has said concerning you in scripture. And begin to walk accordingly. Very soon, they will be serving you with trays on their knees. Here's why you are angry that they are not serving you with trade. You know, today is my start destiny day. My start uh, breakthrough. They are not serving you and you are angry. You go to your friend's house and you see the woman decorate everything. And after it, there's fruit and all of that. And then you get to your own. They keep the food and say, your food is there. When you are hungry, go and eat. It is because of now. There is something God will do in your life. When you are about to eat, they will come to invite you. Daddy, the food is ready. This one that your food gets cold before you know the food is ready. <laughs> you get inside and then you are looking for the meat. The meat cannot be found. It, that is not you. The real you will emerge. Yeah. Where meat will be in different plates. Yeah. Uh, you didn't get that. God is changing somebody's story. Yeah. You are calling your family members now. They are blocking your line. They block it. They block you. <laughs> Very soon they will be asking, what's the, what's the direct line? You see, you can't have a direct line without first having another line that they used to call and the PA will say, oh, guys, not available. Very soon something will happen to you that they need to call PA to get to you. Now, if you don't say amen, then you are missing something. What I'm talking about is not what you look like now. I'm talking about what God has written. Very soon, very soon, very soon, they will be asking, what is his direct line? Sir, can you give me your direct line? They talk to you anyhow today. God is opening your eyes to tell you, no, there is a better you. When the better you emerge, they will talk to you with respect. And they can be saying, it's my younger brother, it's my younger brother. There's a blessing that God will give to you. We say, it's my king's man. Are you getting what I'm saying? They walk to your door, open it, tell it, they won't tell you they are coming now. But there's a time they have to tell you ahead because you might not be in the country. I'm here this morning to open your eyes to you according to the word of God. He said you are a star. Please don't define star as something that cannot be you. You are a star. That is who you are. That is the word of God for you. Let's see it through scripture. Revelation chapter 22 verse 16. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. Particularly when I start with Pretoria today. He said, I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Now, is that me? That's Jesus. Okay, let's connect it to you. In John chapter 17 verse 18, he said, And thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I sent them into the world. So if he was sent as a star, you are also a star. As you have sent me, I also send them. So every name I carry, they carry. So it won't be wrong when they look at you and say, "Mm, Wonderful. You are a star. That is what God has said. The devil suggests otherwise. Reject it. It doesn't matter what the devil has called you. Hey, you are a star. Now, what are the characteristics of star? Let's just look at the two or three of them. Number one, star shines. So they won't cover your glory again. Star does what? Shines. You, you can't say star not know that this is star. Star shines. May your star begin to shine. Two, 
Star is attractive. It no matter how the heavens are dark, when the star is there, you will see it. It is attractive. From today, may your life become attractive. The reason why a sister will tell you, I want to go and pray, and is praying for two, three, four weeks, one month, two months, three months, is because the thing has not shined. When it shines, as soon as you are saying, sister, before you finish your statement, sir, I've been waiting for you to come. This one, he said, they are praying. He said, no, give me time. I'm still praying. Two months. Give me, what is that? Is that project? He said, I'm still praying. Uh, sister, I'm still, please don't, bro, don't waste your time. There are many people that are waiting for you. So when somebody is praying long, you will help them to cut it short. Don't bother about the prayer. Forget the prayer. When your stardom emerge, they will be waiting for you. Your stardom will emerge. The star in you will be attractive. Another characteristic of star is that stars stand alone. So for now, it's fine. They ignore you. Very soon, they will come around. Star stands alone. We don't have cluster stars. They stand alone. If you want people to stand with you, then you might not go too far. I said it here some time ago that those that crawl or walk, walk alone. The one, or I'm sorry, those that walk, they walk with many. The one that run, run with a few. But those that fly, fly alone. So if you want to fly, you want to be a star indeed. You must be ready to be alone. You must be ready to be what? Because stars stand alone. I see God making the star in you to come alive. Amen. What more? Star cannot be covered. They can't cover your star. You, you can be angry. That, Why is that star there? And you try to cover it. I can bend my head. I will still see it. Star cannot be covered. Your star will never be covered. Amen. And anyone that is trying to exchange yours or has exchanged us, I decree the vengeance of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Anyone that is working against your stardom, they did it against Joseph, but they did not succeed. Anyone that is trying to work against your stardom, I declare the vengeance of the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. You see, some people don't know who they are, and that's why the devil tells them who they are not. He tells them, oh, go and do this. They say, no, it's not my type now. You know now, you give yourself excuse to excuse yourself out of divine agenda. There is no star without a scar, and that's a sacrifice. Jesus paid first. We connect to it with commitment. Jesus paid first, and you and I connect to it. Jesus paid the price. He went to the cross. The only reason why you won't be a star, just two reasons. Number one, if you withdraw yourself from God. And number two, if you decide not to do the works of God. Or if not, the price has been paid. You are a star. Amen. Number two, we are redeemed to be far above all principalities and power. It's not a suggestion. That's what God has done. It is not a suggestion. It is an instruction that you are there. Far above principalities and power. Meaning what affects others shouldn't affect you. What molests others shouldn't molest you. We are redeemed to be far above all principalities. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6. And had raised us up together. And made us sit together. Do you know what together is? Eh? Made us sit together. Amen. Put your chairs together. Sit together. Two of you. Aha. You see they are sitting together. They are sitting where? Together. He made them sit together. And then how can you be sitting with Christ and the devil comes to molest you? The only reason why you'll be, you'll be affected is if you forget that you are sitting together. When you sleep, you are sleeping together. With who? Christ. You are traveling. You are traveling together. So the only few places where you will not be together is when you go to drink. Please, you are free. <laughs> because it won't sit together with alcohol. You are your own. 
Whenever you go to do what he has not commanded, hey, you are your or your for you. So anything can happen. It is a risk to walk away from the togetherness of the Almighty. There are some things you must not carry because as soon as you carry them, he excuses himself. You want to sit together? Then walk together with him. You are made to sit together. Now, do you know where the together now is? He said it's far above. It's enough to sit together. Now, sitting together in a different location. In heavenly places, many of the things that scatter the head is not affecting you. In heavenly places, that is where you are made to sit with him. Now, <laughs> in Christ Jesus, meaning I am the pregnancy Jesus is carrying. In Christ Jesus. Similarly, in Ephesians chapter 1, 20 to 21, he said, which hereof in Christ, when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places, look at the distance, far above all principalities, and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in the world to come meaning God has cooked you for tomorrow why are you afraid of chance you are afraid of somebody's statement would you drop your own they drop their own drop a bomb most time when you don't know what to say, you go to tongues. They know it. You might not know what you are saying. You don't have to know. But they are confused. You are seated far above them. Principally, it doesn't matter what who is speaking. You are seated far above principalities and power. Somebody tells you, you are going to be sad. Tell him, the whole of your family will be sacked together. And there's God, there's God. I know the God of this commission. You are not speaking like us. Somebody tells you, you are going to fail. Tell him, I cannot fail. Back to sender. They say, no, why are you talking like that to me now? Why are you talking like, you, you have already accepted it. Don't accept evil statement over your life. Anything you accept, you set to with it. You are seated far above. Say, I know that. I am seated far above. That is your dwelling place forever. Number three, we are redeemed to command supernatural breakthrough. Not to beg for it, to command it. When a police officer comes in now, he tells you, stand up. You have to stand up. You say, why? He says, I say, stand up. When you hear the voice, you know, no. This guy means him. No, he's not joking. He's not prank. <laughs> so you stand up. Why? He's saying it because he has the audacity to say it. You have audacity to command breakthrough. Not a begging for breakthrough. God has given that to you. And that is what we are looking from scripture. When you see it from scripture, you know it is your right. Imagine that you don't know that they've paid you. <laughs> And then the money is in your account. You have the card. Because you refuse to check, you will be typing something funny. Let me just try to withdraw 200. Maybe I will get 200. And he doesn't know they've paid. So he starts buying things like somebody that is begging to buy. But the day you know what is in your account, <laughs> you, see, you see, people hide ATM card. You, when they have money, <laughs> they, they are so proud of it. They go, I want to make withdrawal. He's, he's very happy and excited because they paid. He's paid. It. Even your work in the day when they paid is different. Do I have a witness here? When they pay, the way you walk into a shop right, pick and pay, you know it's different. Gallantly. And then you are picking things. But if there's no pay, you pick, check this in. If I buy this one, then I still have money for taxi file. Uh, let me buy this small one. <laughs> But when you know what you have according to his word, you are bold to do what you ought to do. If not, you'll be living like uh, someone that is being frustrated. Because you know what you have. The challenge of many is that they don't know what they have in Christ. 
So they live the opposite of what God has destined for them. No, what you have in Christ, you are not a non entity. Eh? You that God sent 11,000 angels to, to preserve you. He said, Don't you know that I can now command legions of angels? That's how powerful you are. Sir, when you woke up this morning, everyone wait, they were waiting for you to wake up. And angels were waiting for you to give command. You need to understand that every day is a day of breakthrough. You are a commander sent from heaven, having angels. What a resource. You need to understand this, sir. So that you won't be living like security on earth. You are not the angel. Say, he gives his angels charge. So all you need to do is to begin to use the angels. Angels of a living. Some of you have never prayed or said anything to angel before. Oh, the only time you remember angel is when the journey is very far. Talk. God's angel will go before me. So angels are ministry agents. They stand. If you don't need them, send them to me. Your own. Just tell them, go to pastor. Angels are there to take command from you. He has given them charge. He said, go and as you are assigned to this person. So you need to understand it. Eh, customers are not coming. The reason they are not coming is because somebody has used, has used something to control them there. Tell the angels, go and bring them. Some of you, the only one you know how to do is repair angels to go and reap souls alone. No, sir. They also work for you. Angels of the living God. This week, I want to be busy. Go and bring them. And they know if they don't do their duty, they're in trouble. Because the most I have commanded them to serve you. You need to understand it. It's not stories. That's scriptures. It is there. That is what God has ordained it to be. They are redeemed to command supernatural breakthrough. How do I know? Matthew chapter 5, 13 to 16. Please take it as, it, as the word is. He said, Ye are the salt of the earth. Now, the natural salt, you know, what is it used for? Number one, it helps the food to be sweet. Am I correct? If there's no salt in food, you ask question. Except if you are not feeling too well and they said, don't take salt. When you taste food and there's no salt, you wonder, what is this? What have I done? Why? <laughs> because there's no taste. So what is taste? The salt. Salt is to make life sweet. Hello. Meaning you are sent to this world to make life sweet for your family. You know, if you are looking for ingredients, if you don't have anything, you have salt. And God so made it that salt is one of the cheapest commodities. You see water, you see salt. He made it so simple for us. Salt. That's why when you go to your neighbor to ask for salt, he gives you quickly because it's plenty. <laughs> there are some things you go to ask for. They say, ah, I don't have. Why? Because it's the last one. <laughs> but salt is given quickly. He said, you are the salt. And but salt has serious value to food. The second thing salt does is to preserve. It's used as preservative. Salt preserves, meaning you are also to preserve the destiny of your family as a salt of the world. Now, if you do that in your family, I do that, then we are controlling the world. The world will be sweet. If people see you and they think sorrowful, then there's something wrong. If every time you call home, they said he's called, just wait. <laughs> that shall not be your story. Yeah. That they program what you will say. Just wait now. You will hear him now. After he greets me now, just hear what you will say. He will ask for something. Wait. And as soon as you call, how is everybody? I just said I should greet you. And then when they're about to call, they're very skillful. When they're about to call, they call, wait, wait, sir. Um, I don't know if I can get something there. Like, I told you. I told you. You are no more salt, sir. That's not the salt. Every time people speak to you, if their spirit comes down, you have to pray, Lord, help me to be salt. I don't call family too often, but when I call, I know that I will hear something. Bros, how far? I say, what is it? You say, okay, I've heard you. I'll get back to you. It's better, it's sweeter like that to get back to them. I love you too. Me, I don't know about you, but I love it. It's okay, I'll get back. And really, I will get back to them. Is the sweetest part of life to be a blessing to others. God will make you a blessing to your family members. 
You are the salt of the meaning. Every time they remember you, sweetness come to her. That I have you, I am happy. You are the salt. Still in that scripture? The Bible also said that you are the light of the world. Verse 14. You are the light of the world, meaning everyone will remain in darkness until you shine. You are the light of the world. I said, without you, life will be full of low shading. Low shading your family, low shading your business place. You are the light. Your appearance gives relief. That's what light does. Uh, everybody has tested it. Um, you know what low shading is, especially when you are not expecting it. The light goes off. It looks as if everything is down. The easiest thing to do, you can't do it. Look at your key by your side. You have been like a blind man, like a blind superstar looking for key, but the key is there. But as soon as light comes, bah, there's relief. You are the light. There should be relief. You should give his people of their attentions. That is what God has programmed you to be. It doesn't matter what the devil has done. You will begin to shine as light. In the name of Jesus Christ. He said, in that same scripture, a city. Kai, that one might be difficult to contain, but contain it. He said, you are a city. Not a local champion. You are a city. He said, you are set on the hill that cannot be healed. You must process to understand that God is saying something. He said, you are a city. Meaning you are not permitted to die as a tenant. Kai, you didn't get that one. He said, you are a city. Meaning you are not permitted to die as a tenant. The minimum at least should be landlord. You have been doing tenants meeting, tenant meeting. You are changing meetings very soon. <laughs> Say all tenants gather. And then the landlord will tell them to sit down. You see, if you stop parking, if you don't stop parking here, I will evict you, I'll give you your money, you go. He tells you, you are pouring water, they don't pour water. <laughs> he gives you a money of structure. But you see, when landlords meet, you say, no, you see, this is my house. I have authority over my house. Landlords speak with audacity. No one here will die as tenants. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. He said, you are a city. Say to yourself, I'm a city. Now, if you're afraid to say it, then you're joking. Say, I'm a city. That is who you are. That is who you are. Praise the name of the Lord. It went further in verse 15. It said, neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Verse 16, let your light so shine. Please don't stop your light from shining. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. Then the essence of the, it all is that so that it can glorify the Father. So it's change of story for God to receive glory. Change of story for God to receive glory. How can you say me alone? I'm a light. I'm the soul. It's for glory. They asked Jesus. He said, who, was, who committed a sin for this man to be born blind? He said, it's for glory. I'm just looking for glory. So I create event for glory. So it's changing your story for glory. It's changing your story for glory. God will glorify himself in your life. Number four, we are redeemed as gods in the likeness of men. We are redeemed as gods in the likeness of men. John 10, verse 35, if we call them gods, unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken. You call them gods, unto whom they were. So if the word of God is for you, you are gods. You are gods. So you shouldn't be like a slave. You are gods. You shouldn't be molested by the devil. You are gods. God give command. In Acts chapter 14, verse 11, he mentioned again, he said, the gods have come down unto us in the likeness of men. The gods have come down unto us in the likeness of men. Psalm 82, verse 5 to 7, he said, they know not, neither will they understand, but you will understand, that they walk all in darkness, all the foundation of the earth are out of course. I have said, I have said, in case you are not listening, that's what he's telling you, I have said, he said I have said it before, you refuse to listen. He said, I have said, I said it to Moses, I meant all of you, together with Moses, you refuse to listen. I have said, because some of us will say, no, he said, yeah, God, he was talking to Moses. He said, I have said it before. He said, I have said, ye are gods. How many of us? All of you are children of the Most High. So every child of God is a God. The child of a goat is a goat. It doesn't matter the English name they try to give. Hmm? The child of a dog is a dog. A puppy, whatever. It's just for convenience. It's a dog. 
So the child of God must be a God. That is, you are in command. You are in control. That is who you are. May you be in charge of your office place. You see, you don't have to be the director to be in charge. You see, whenever you come and you make demands and it's granted, you are in charge. Eh, people wait for you to say, no, I know if you go to him, he will agree. And you get there, sir, we want this, we want this. He say, go ahead. You are, you are in charge already. You might be at the security post. <laughs> but if you are having it the way you want it, you are God already. That shall be your portion forever. But to assess our heritage in the world, we must do the following. Number one, one must possess a meek spirit. Meekness is a must. Meekness is, is a must. To assess your heritage in the world. Meekness is not weakness. It is strength under control. Meekness is not weakness. It is strength under control. In fact, meekness is a combination of humility and spirituality. Or if you like, simplicity. Meekness is a combination of humility and simplicity. No, if I, if, I, if I keep quiet too much, they will deal with me. They will do this. They will, do this. They will think I'm ordinary. That is not meekness. You don't have to show off. Meekness. Be meek. You need meekness to be taught the ways of God. God wants to speak to you, but he only speaks to the meek. One of the men that enjoyed relationship with God was Moses. And the Bible made mention of him that he was the meekest man on earth. Numbers chapter 12, verse 3. Now the man Moses was very meek. Above all the men which were upon the face of the earth, he was very meek. No wonder God found pleasure in dwelling with him. He was meek. He was meek. God does not speak to the proud man. He resists the proud. Some people come, they want to tell you, they want, to, they want you to pray for them. And then when they come, the way they talk, they say, I, know, I see, I fast. I pray, I, I, so what, do you, what did it come from? Drop your credentials. Drop your reputation. Reputation is always against manifestation. Drop it. He says, um, uh, I have calling now. <laughs> I am called. God called me. I know. In fact, I pray for people, they are delivered. And he's asking for prayer. Go and pray for yourself. No, you must drop your reputation. If you want God to lift you, you must drop whatever you call what you have. Most times, what you think you are is the reason why you didn't get what he has to give. Drop it. Drop it. Refuse to be pompous. When a person is full of self, is empty of substance. When you are full of self, you are empty of something. Very proud. Proud generation. Very proud. There are some men that will never ask their wife for advice. You don't know it all. Yeah. You, if you want to fail easily, stop. Don't ask your wife. Keep doing it alone. Later you now come back, we are failed. And you are the one that made the decision. There is nothing important that I must do without asking my wife. Uh, I want to do this. What do you think? We might debate it. That's what makes you beautiful. We might debate it. Why do you think you should know? I feel this is... I feel, okay, let me go and think about it. I'm not saying because they ask you as a woman, you say if you do it. <laughs> that's another side of it. <laughs> Pride. We must learn to be meek. Be meek. It's only the meek that God will lift. The Bible made mention that it is a meek that he will teach his ways. You want God to teach you his ways, then you must be meek. He resists the proud. That means the proud has no future. If God is resisting you, who wants to help you? If man resists you, God will help you, he will deliver you. <laughs> but if God is the one resisting, he resists the proud. What does it mean to resist? The proud wants to rise. God is the one pressing him down. You know, some people have this story, they say... Um, I was pressed in the night. I was pressed in the night. Let me show you an example of resist. Now, start, try to stand up. Stand. I, I select him intentionally. I can't pick you. Now, <laughs> God resists the proud like this. He try to stand up. You are not trying. <laughs> so, when God is one, what is his future? When God is the one resisting you, sir, nobody can help you. Stay low before yourself. 
humble yourself. No matter what God has given to you, watch what you see. If not, you have to go to the school of Nebuchadnezzar to learn. The man was powerful, sir. How powerful was he? For seven years, he was in the bush, eating grass. Yet nobody tried to contest and say, since our king has gone, let's replace him. They couldn't try. His absence was as strong as his presence. Nebu. He was that strong, that tough. So, but you hear it. See what returned Nebu. When Nebu returned after seven years, he began to sing, For this God is our God. What he refused to sing when it was normal to sing, he began to sing <laughs> when it was no more convenient. Keep pride before pride kill you. Someone said, yes, sir, you are very humble. I remember every time that I'm clay. Eh? You, you have not seen somebody in sickness, in typhoid and malaria. I don't know if it has happened to you. They backed me before one day from school. A very tall young man. And my leg was longer than the person that backed me. So with all my strength, and they backed me, sir, with just one sickness. And then you are for me. I wish you know <laughs> that if anything happened to you, immediately they replace you. They won't say we are not doing lectures today because you did not come. Humble yourself. Pride is a killer. It will not be your portion. Meekness is the fruit of the spirit. You know there are things you can fake? You can't fake it long with meekness. No, no, no. If you are not meek, you are not meek. Before you know, say, no, what is if self? What is if self? <laughs> That's a proud man speaking. See, it's just because of one thing, no. Me and you in the same unit. If he's outside, can you talk to me like that? Is that a proud man speaking? Capital Proudy. You know, we have Audi. We have Proudy. <laughs> it's on his forehead. He said, if not for something. How old is he? <laughs> because we are in the same church. Eh, that's pride. Do you know pride have look? Proud look. God does not speak to the proud. Let's continue. Number two. One must continue to seek a serene environment to seek the face of God. You must continue, not once in a while. It, it, some people, the last time they seek face was when they wanted to marry. After that time, they are on their own. Always seek the face of God. It's not every business that's your business. And people are making profit. God said, don't enter. If you enter, you crush even the one that they were, they were making. This was all your business. God, are you the one? If you are not the one, I'm confused. Help me. Have mercy. Have mercy. Here it is. Yesterday's strategy may be expired today. Experience does not count. Yesterday's strategy might be expired today. So this is how I did it last time. It worked for me. It does not work like God wants connection with you. And that's why he will not keep it the same strategy. One day he said, woe unto him that go to Egypt. The other day he said, go to Egypt. <laughs> In scripture, he said, woe unto him that goes to Egypt. When they wanted to run away, um, um, our baby Jesus, our Lord and personal Savior, where did they go to? Egypt. So you can't cram God. Yeah? You, don't, you can't cram his ways. He wants to, to connect with you. That's why he wants you to ask him every time. Like children will do. Uncle, I want to go and we go. They come back. Uncle, I want to go and drink water. Go. Uncle, I want to go and pull. Go. That is how God wants us to relate with him. One day he came like that and discovered that Adam has done something without permission. He lost us to take permission. Many people travel. They need not return because they did not take permission. And God does not contend with man. So he doesn't argue with you. He tells you what you think you should do. And if you are stubborn, he leaves you. You had a story of our father in faith. Turn left. Turn right. And he was going, sir, this place is a bush. Okay, God stops talking. He said, Lord, have mercy on me, I'm sorry. Then he continued to lead him. This is a practical example to tell us that no, God does not want you to be independent. Independent is an agenda of man, not God. God wants you to be permanently dependent on him. Proverbs 18, 1. 
through desire, a man, having separated himself, seeketh and intermediate with all wisdom. So we need quietness, quiet time to examine our lives openly and honestly. In case people are deceiving you, this man is trying, you are led, you are powerful. Don't deceive yourself. They are leading you to hell. They want to kill you. You know the truth about yourself. If you are not there, just smile. Thank you. Glory to God. Go and tell yourself. Forget it. Not, it's not true. You know it's not true. <laughs> tell yourself the truth. Is somebody following me? Spending time with God gives you opportunity to relate, to rapport with strange order of revelation. Please find time to spend time with God. Life is noisy. You need separation to make news. Don't be a noisemaker. Life is very noisy. You need separation. <laughs> I used to tell business people, those that do buying and selling, I say, before you make your list, ask God, what will you buy? So that you won't buy something and you get expires in your shop. He will tell you what to buy. He will say, no need. This one, leave it. This one, leave it. You will think you are talking, but no. It's God that is flowing through you. First, prepare yourself. Father, help me. I don't know how to go about it. Jesus, help me. When I prepare a message, I tell him, I say, Lord, the one they must not hear, let me forget. The one that I prepare, you know, God prepares, man prepares. <laughs> the one the people must not hear do today, Jesus deleted. it. Because it is his voice that makes sense. The voice of man will not make any sense. Learn to be quiet, sitting before God, to hear from him. Seek to know what God is saying now. There are times to fight. There are times to run. It's not every battle you fight. Hello? <laughs> May the Lord grant us understanding. Put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Remember that today is our covenant day of marital breakthrough. You will break forth on every side. Amen. Quickly, let's look at some of the keys to commanding marital breakthrough. Sir, it's a reality, sir. You need to understand that it's very real. Marital breakthrough is possible. It's possible. Some time ago, a man was asked at the age of 93, what's the secret of your long life? And he said, in one sentence, good wife. Meaning, good marriage. If you marry knife, you'll be killed every day. If you marry what? You know there's wife, there's knife. Knife, when knife opens the mouth, one statement can give you migraine from head to toe, your body fever. One statement. But when you marry wife, every time you feel down, when you see her, you're happy. There's no kingdom like my bedroom, sir. Best kingdom you can ever be. I'm telling you, there's peace there. The devil knows it. <laughs> Anything you, they have anywhere. When we enter there, we're just happy. Happy people. Happy people. There's no place. There's nothing as good after salvation like a good marital testimony. But I say it for someone today. Whatever has been the challenge in your home, I decree that God will visit your home. I'm a testimony of it. Good things, peaceful environment. And you think the pastor will preach well? You will just be saying what he doesn't understand, even him doesn't understand, if he doesn't have a peaceful home. You will see, you will see that this message is scattered. By <laughs> but when there is peace, you enjoy the peace even on the altar. When there is peace, you see the peace everywhere. Such as God has given me, I pray that God will give to many of us here. Yeah. We see it in the life of our father. I was not married when I used to hear it. That it's possible to marry without crisis. And because where I know there's crisis, marriage, in fact, my description before of marriage is fighting to set two. <laughs> because then we see people, the man is beating the wife, the wife is trying to come out of the house, eh? and then the children are in the middle. That is okay, mom is okay, it's fine, it's okay. That's what I used to know until I came to this country. I knew it was possible for man and woman to stay together without fight. I decree peace on every home Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Marriage is a function, is a foundation right, of life that must not be ignored. It's a major foundation, major foundation. There are people that because of what they have seen, they feel it's not necessary. Sir, there's a God of second chance. He can make, he can fix anything. The institution of marriage was established by God. So the one that established it can fix it. Believe it. 
The one that established it can fix it. We heard of the testimony. Nine years they've tried to settle it, it was not going doing. And then all of a sudden, she felt led to call, and she called the man and said, I'm coming home. And that was all. Why? Because Jehovah, the owner of marriage, has fixed it. Homes will be fixed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every challenge, marital dest uh, destiny, such as marital delays, marital crisis, and the likes of them, are manifestation of satanic oppression. Those crises, no, God can't be in crisis. He's not the one. The devil is behind it. If you can understand that there's someone that wants you to quarrel, to fight your husband, if you can understand, you refuse to fight that fight. No, no, no. The way my husband is behaving, he doesn't behave like a man. I'm with dealing with him today. Now, it's the devil. He used a remote. And then as soon as you come, uh -huh, he's coming. You were peaceful before. You were playing Ludo with your friend. As soon as you hear the car enter, see, my dear, go, go, go with the Ludo. Go with the Ludo. And she posted, look at the remote, sir. The devil remoting the woman to fight. Good, good afternoon. You don't know how you look like. Go and watch them in movies. The devil stays somewhere. He said, and he tells the man, slap her. She's talking too much. If you slap her once, she'll be quiet. And then, you see the man slap. Yeah, there is the devil behind the scene. Don't give the devil the remote of your life. Hello. No, pastor, you don't know. You don't know my wife. If you know my wife, you talk like that. It's also the devil that is telling you to look down on what you are told. There is one Satan somewhere controlling the relationship. Don't allow the devil. That's why the Bible says, resist the devil, he will flee. When you see that, it makes trouble and you refuse to cooperate with him. Say, this one's a waste of time. He will leave you and go. Is somebody following me? Take note this morning that God is interested in families. According to Psalm 68 verse 6, he said, God set a solitude in families. He bringeth out those which are bound with chains. But the rebellion dwell in dry land. Don't be rebellious. Don't be rebellious. God gives homes peace. You must be interested in it. In Matthew chapter 13, verse 28, he said unto them, an enemy has done this. No, that's how no, but that's this is not how my wife used to be. She used to be the enemy has done this. So when you know it's the enemy, don't fight physical fights. Many are focusing on the physical. There is something in the realm of the spirit that the devil is doing because he knows that a home that is divided against himself cannot stand. Look at breakthrough coming. But he brings one misunderstanding and the angels arrive and they, can't, they don't know who to give. So they have to return. And they might go for three years. That shall not be your portion. God is holy. He cannot behold iniquity. Every child of God that so desires has a God-given right to be settled in marriage. It is all right to be said to. Because it is our God that settles people in marriage. In Proverbs 18, verse 20, we say, Whoso findeth a wife. Find it a good thing. So if it's a good God, why wouldn't you have the good thing? He find it a good thing and obtain favor from the Lord. So there are good things that may not be found until good wife is found. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, how do I actualize a glorious marital destiny? How do we actualize a glorious marital destiny? Number one, be saved and remain in love with God. God secures his lovers. If God is your first love, the other love won't have issue with you, or you won't have issue with the other love. He will always secure your home. He will not allow you to marry a wrong person. Because some people, all they know is what they want. I want to have very tall very tall. I want long legs. So that's all they knew. Innocently because they, they were not in Christ. So somehow they find themselves in a situation. The lady has the long legs but very troublesome. They say I have the man to, to have six pack. You know six pack? <laughs> eh? I want six pack. Now the man has a six pack but use one pack to destroy your face time to time. Because that's all she knows. She, all she knows was a physical. It's carrying things. You are even encouraging him. Hey, see Mozu. <laughs> that's all they know. If when you are in love with God, He secures you from them. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? The first love should be God. So when 
One agabagebe. You know what agabagebe? The, the way the name sounds, it's not, you know it's not something good. When they are coming, God bless you from them. I know, I met her in church. I saw, you know, when the children of God gather, eh? They sort of be like, also came. And then they are coming to look for someone. So you must also strategize to be a true child of God. They won't see you. Anyone that does not need to see you won't see you. Yeah. Until you are saved, you are not safe. So many of them, when the devil wants to destroy people, he pumps people to them from the marine world. So that's why you need to be saved. When you are saved, God secures you. John chapter 3, verse 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, Very, very, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God is to also be offered what heaven has to offer. And one of the things is good things that marriage has to offer. So it's part of it's a package. It's a package. If I had married wrong today, I would have been a wrestler. Sometime ago, I heard of a pastor. It was Sunday morning that the wife would wake up and say, if you don't give me this thing now, that your service will scatter. <laughs> the man carry anointing, but married a knife. So Sunday morning, you wait. You won't do anything Monday, Tuesday. Man, just leave him. Let him do his thing. On Sunday morning, what was the time? 6.30. Let me see how you get inspiration. There's a great man of God that will have lived longer, if not for a wrong wife. The woman will go and steal chicken. Steal chicken and give to prophet because he's a prophet. And the prophet will eat. You see, you see, you see, you are fake prophets. If you are a true prophet, you will know that that's chicken. I stole it. An apostle, very soon, we still refer to him today. Married. He wears white garment because that's what is common then. That's how you identify pastor. Today we wear suit. Then everybody wear white. She will come when it is time for the crusade and carry oil, the bottle of oil, and pour him and laugh. Let me see how you want to go. Marry well. When you love Jesus perfectly, Look at what the scripture says concerning you. Romans chapter 8 verse 28. He said, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. To them that love. So it's the love of God that commands the correct lovers to come. Not, you can't live your life and use it to learn how to live well. No, no, you can't. You can't use less your life. No, you can't try it. Then you try it and come down. Many have tried it. They couldn't come down from it. Love God well, then the right things will come to you. May the Lord grant somebody understanding. Number two, remain committed to kingdom advancement endeavors. Sir is a jackpot of life. I can't remember praying like people do pray for wife. No, I can't remember. And I've seen my father in faith also say he was not praying for wife, he was on a journey. He met his wife in a bus. He was traveling. He met the woman there. The mama we are celebrating today. I can't remember. Praying and praying, Father, Father, no. When I prayed it for some time, and I saw everyone that was coming was looting me. It was total looting. You know, paying school fees for someone, and then getting to the school, the same school, and then the person is not doing it again. If the person didn't get to school, wouldn't have met that person. Let's not do it again. But I now know that God was actually saying that scripture. All things work together. And for good to them that love. So, everyone that needs to reject you, rejected you. The one that needs to reject me, rejected me, so that we can meet. That's how it works. So, when somebody says, not doing it again, you better dance. All things are working for my good. Because he's not qualified to be your wife. She's not qualified. Or he's not qualified to be your husband. I say, no, by fa fa pastor of prayer, I must not lose this one. Oh, the witches in my village are following me. You better relax. It's for your good. If you are committed to serving him. Because marriage is one of such things that was mentioned in Matthew chapter 6 verse 3. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things, including wife, including husband, shall be added. Shall be added. But you made it a focus. That's why they are not considering. Eh, you, if you make God your focus, they will be added to you. Say, why are you not married? I have been looking for. 
Look for God. You will find wife in God. What more? Number three. Beware of pride. This pride surface again. If you are not humble, marriage is not your thing. Because in laws will come. You are rude to them, the trouble starts. Marriage is for the humble. It's two foolish people coming together for God to make them wise. If you come as a wise person, it will bounce you back. Pride. Pride. Don't kill yourself with standard. And say, no, it must be a graduate. And you that is a graduate, now, your graduate is standing on one leg. She must be a graduate. No, I can't marry her. Look at, look at, look at, look at you. Some standards you create. Now, you, when you are creating your standard, check your age. Because everything answers to time. And Some even goes extra mile. I don't know who gave them that. Say, no, if it's not a virgin, I won't marry. <laughs> Sorry. I hope you are a virgin. She is too dark. Which one can you create? He said, no, the, the, ah, no, no, no. He, he's short. He's short. What can you create? Then you get the long one and he puts your head here every time. <laughs> you better humble yourself. There is no ready made, made, ready made male or female, or man or woman. No ready made. Very rough garden. In fact, jungle. Then we, we prune it to become a garden. <laughs> if I tell you some stories, you laugh. <laughs> we prune it. We prune it. I'm telling you, we prune it. Remember when my, myself and my wife started? Initially, it would look like, no, what's happening? No, but we understood. Sir, some of you don't read anything. No book, no, no message, and you want to marry? Before you, you, you graduated in school, didn't you read? Was there any time your lecturer said, just sit down and the book will be reading itself? You must read concerning marriage. Go and study. That is what helped us. Good foundation. Good foundation. You want to go go it? Why men cheat? Okay. <laughs> May the Lord deliver somebody. We took our time to crawl, to walk on our garden. The first thing we did was to name our home Heaven on Earth. So we began to change our curtains, change our chairs to color as soon as we marry, color gold, gold. So we prepare for heaven. We prepare, we had some laws, some little, little things to guide us. Not because we came perfect. No, it's not true. No, it's not true. We walked on it. Go and walk on your own. The way my wife talked too much. No, no, no. Walk on her. Go and sit down, carry a book. My wife. This is what she does. How do I counter this one? Okay, Jesus, thank you. Right. And begin to study her and begin to do it. Don't bother if she will cooperate or not. You just do your part. God is a faithful God. And the way my husband behaves, he doesn't behave well. Go and sit down, write the book, the title of the book, My Husband. This is what he does. Okay, this is how to undo this one. And every time you succeed in any area, be excited. I have gotten the key. Work on him. Some people used to call it Mumu Button, that everyone has Mumu Button, that there's something to touch. That the person will come down. You better touch it. It's not your brother. That's not your elder brother. You didn't marry your brother. You need to work on it. Say, do, do, you, do you know I'm a graduate? And then because God gives you a good job. And then you used to terrorize everybody. Okay. When he leaves you. And somebody has taken him. Now we're going to begin to disturb pastor. Pastor, you need to pray. Pastor, I'm fasting. Join me in a fast. Now lie. I won't fast that kind of fast. <laughs> Never. Any fast that require wisdom, go and use wisdom. Use what? By the time a man starts talking like a woman, you know there's a problem. The woman talk, you talk back. You talk, 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 you do, you do. The man has become something else. They have taken it from him. No, no, no. When she talks, you calm down. Then there's a time to present it. Are you getting me? When you present it the right time, it will go well. The Bible says, how possible are right words? Not powerful words, right words. Well, let's go on. Number four. We're about to close. Pray 
for direction. Pray for direction. Pray for direction. Psalm, or Proverbs, rather, Proverbs 16, verse 9. The Lord directs our paths. So we must pray. Pray for direction. A man's heart devises his way, his way but the Lord is one that directs. God always have a way out. There's always a way out. Pray for direction. Ask God for direction. Lord Jesus, how do I go? This is what has been reoccurring. How do I go? And be realistic when you are praying. Be realistic. Some people, the kind of description they have to marry is not there. You can't get it on earth. You have to go to heaven. The, the description all in one, and they are not as good as what they are looking for. It's not wrong to love something good. When you see this description I'm giving, it might be a serious issue. Be realistic. The Bible says you watch and pray also. So don't just be there also and then he said uh, you have prayed. And then God is showing you somebody. I think she's the one. And then you are still praying. You better open your eyes. Even the Bible tells us in Matthew 7, 7. He said we should do what? Ask. It shall be given. Seek. You go to her. Eh? Knock. Eh? So you need to knock. Not escorting her home. Escorting her to a plaza, putting her in front of your car, and you didn't see anything. She should know now. It's an error. Then people get angry. Some people even leave church for it. Say the sister now got married. She used me. But you were sitting in the car. You did not say anything. The Holy Ghost won't speak for you. There are a lot of men that don't know how to talk. You see, it's not there's nothing wrong. You go there, you say, I like you. And I want us to consider this. If she knocks you, fine. Thank you, Jesus. All things work together. For my good. You move on. If there's another one, pick again. Who told you your pastor it was the first one? I knock, they knock me. I knock, they knock me. I knock, they knock me. I knock, I was found. So when they knock you, it's nothing wrong. They are not good enough for you. Are you guessing what I'm saying? And I say, because I've tried the other day, I didn't get it. I'm going to CAC. Be confusing yourself. Mm -hmm. Let's close here. We'll continue in second service. Rise to your feet, everyone. And give God praise. Magnify his name. Give him praise, somebody. I appreciate it for the word you have received this morning. I believe someone has gotten a wisdom here and there. I appreciate God. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I give him praise. Give him thanks. Give him praise. Give him thanks. Lord, we we'll give you all the glory. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. No matter what is happening in your home, there is a solution. Yes, my home is like this. My sir, there is a solution. And the solution is not in any man but in God. Oh, he left me. He disappointed me. Don't kill yourself. Don't kill yourself. Don't kill yourself over it. There is a solution. There is a way out. Now you will lift up your voice, Father. You know what you desire. Some fellows want to be settled. Some fellows want the peace to be restored in their homes. You know the area you desire marital breakthrough. Lift up your voice with a sincere heart and ask, Lord, have mercy. Help me in this area. Lord, help me. Lift up your voice and pray. Oh, Father, help me to mend my home. There are areas where you need help. Lift up your voice and ask, Lord, let your mercy prevail. Let your mercy prevail. Help me, Father. Help me, Father. Living like cat and dog is not a plan of God. You quarrel today, tomorrow, another quarrel, next tomorrow, another quarrel. No, no, no. That's not the will of God. Jesus, help me. Jesus, help me. Help me. Give me the right word at all times in my home. Let there be peace in my family. Let there be peace. Let there be peace. Let there be peace. Oh, Father, the right man, the right woman. The right man, the right woman. The right man, the right woman. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Hear this. It is not money that's hindering you from getting married. If you find the right person, the right things will be in place. Some people want to save money. You don't save to marry. Don't just waste your time. You don't save to marry. I bought my suit like a week plus. It's not because I didn't want to buy a head. Around a week. Because the money was not there. That's the truth. Amen. And my best man, I don't know how I chose, but I chose and he too didn't have money for suits. So I was gathering money for two of us. So the money was not there. Don't wait until things are okay. No, no, no. Marriage is what makes things okay. 
I pray that God will locate someone this season. And your marital testimony will be a glorious one. But hear this, we said you must begin with Christ. It is the love for God that splashed on love for others. If you don't have a good relationship with Christ, you can't have a peaceful home. But I want to pray for someone today and I want a new beginning for you. Wherever you are, you know you have gotten it wrong. Some people have even gone to strange places to seek for help and it's not working. Jesus wants to help your home today. He wants to help you first and it won't help your home. Wherever you are, you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Wherever you are, lift up your right hand in heaven and place it on your chest right now. You want to accept him as your Lord. You want to accept him as your Savior. Place your right hand in your chest right now. And say this words of prayer with me. Lord Jesus. Pray, Lord Jesus. I surrender my life to you. I ask for mercy. Forgive me my sins. I reject the devil today. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I know that you died for me. That I should be free from the power of sin. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. In Jesus' mighty name. You said that prayer with me. Please come. I want to pray for you here. Quiet. You said that prayer. Come. I want to pray for you. Don't be ashamed. Whatever tells you not to come is a devil. He wants to hinder you again. Don't allow him. You said that prayer. Come, come, come. Come, come. The devil wants to stop you. Refuse it. Refuse it. Come. Come. You are the gallery. Whenever you are, you said that prayer. Come. Jesus wants to save you. Jesus wants to free you from the power of darkness. From the forces of wickedness. If you are coming, come quickly. Come quickly. You are coming. Come quickly. 30 more seconds. Wherever you are, you want to answer this call. Come. 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 Yes, Lord. My to Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for this one. Your hands are safe there. I ask that you preserve them. I decree that today as you walk away from sin, everything that you have missed will be restored back to you. I ask for glorious marital testimony for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Welcome to your new beginning in Jesus' precious name. Congratulations, church. Are you celebrating Jesus? Please go with our officials. Go with them. They want to take down your detail and so we can continue to pray for you. Somebody celebrate Jesus. Are you celebrating him? Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Get your bottle of oil. Remember we are told that every Sunday is an anointing service. Amen. This anointing is for glorious marital testimony. People might have seen you in a different light. But after this anointing, they will see a new home for you. They will see a new marital testimony for you. Maybe you are even here, you are already ashamed because they know you with Sister A, know you with Sister B. Now Sister C is coming. You are already ashamed, but here this God is saying, He will give you a new beginning. You are here, nobody is speaking to you. There is a covering already over your life. As you are anointed today, there shall be a new beginning. There shall be peace in every home. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, place that oil on your forehead and begin to call for the new beginning. Begin to call for a new beginning in your family. In your family, call for the new beginning. You have your siblings that are not settled maritally. Begin to call for a new beginning. Begin to pray on their behalf. Someone was saying, for 50 years, nobody married in their family. Look at you. Your story is looking like that already. Lift up your voice and pray. Lord, I ask for a new beginning. I ask for a new beginning concerning my marital testimony. A new beginning, Father. A new beginning, Father. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Now, in the next few minutes, you are going to celebrate God. And what are you celebrating? Celebrating the new beginning. Hallelujah. Choir, you lead us a place we dance and celebrate God for the new beginning. Let's go.
You've got your transport seed, just wave it to Jesus, your seated position, lift it up. I decree that heaven over you is open. As you help other people to church, God will open the doors for you. For strange order of breakthrough. For strange order of blessing. In every area you have struggled before, I decree that God will help you out. In Jesus' mighty name, the seed in your hand is blessed. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Congratulations. Amen. Praise God. So you drop your seed as you listen to the following announcement. Praise the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. Take note, Covenant of Prayer continues tomorrow. Hallelujah. It com continues tomorrow by 6 a.m. Please don't miss it for any reason. It promises to be a great time in the presence of the Lord. I see God giving you a new beginning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let us also take note that Satellite Fellowship is on Saturday. We'll be placing on the notice board um, the, the addresses of our Satellite Fellowship. If you know your own has not been active, please, why not um, bring it back and then let God bless your home like he did concerning Obededom. The Lord bless you as you do so in Jesus' mighty name. The inspection, the visit is still on. Um, I've visited over nine, but nine, it's nine overseas already in two weeks. So we'll continue the upper Saturday, not this week, the upper Saturday. You want your home to also be a center. Why not? Let us know. The Lord bless you as you do so in Jesus' precious name. Good news. <laughs> Today is our Samaritan Sunday. We'll be blessing uh, the needy around us. It's going to be taking place at the second service. However, for those that are worshiping for the first time, they can be uh, attended to in the first service. But every other person is so, so that we can manage the crowd. The Lord bless you as you comply. So after second service, we'll do it in the temple. God bless you. Good news. <laughs> Wolf B, Wolf B, Wolf B. The June special of Wolf B is taking place from tomorrow morning. It promised to be a great time in God's presence. Pastors are coming from everywhere to be a blessing to the Wobi students. So please, you have not um, filled the form, quickly get the form. It's free. Amen. Get the form and then enroll for Wolfby. The Lord bless you as you do so. If you have filled your form, you can as well submit it beginning from today. Praise God. Let's take note that Believers Foundation class holds today after this um, second service. After second service, we have our Believers Foundation class. If you have not attended, why not do so? And God will bless you. And finally, good, good news. <laughs> Next Sunday is our end of month Thanksgiving and dedication service. It is also an anointing service and covenant day of fruitfulness. Every expected mother and father should come with a point of contact to their fruitfulness. This time, God will answer you in Jesus' mighty name. You are worshiping with us for the first time on Sunday morning. We are about to close in this service. This is your first Sunday here. We want to pray for you before we close. It is your first Sunday, wherever you are, just wave your hands to Jesus. It's your first Sunday, wherever you are, just wave your hands. This is your first Sunday here. If you are worshiping with us for the first time on Sunday morning like this. Praise God. Church, rise to your feet as we give God thanks. Rise to your feet as we celebrate him for his word today, for his blessing. Give him thanks, give him praise. It is absent. Magnify his name. Magnify his name. Lord, we thank you. Glory and honor be to your name. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' mighty name. As you go this morning, go in peace. Enjoy the peace of heaven. Every home shall be peaceful. When unbelievers see your home, they will want to follow your God. In the name of Jesus, every arrow of troubles targeted at your family is returned back to sender in the name of Jesus. Anyone here believing God for Sutor, believing God for marital breakthrough, I declare the same will happen this year. This year will not end without your testimony. The God of heaven will make it happen with speed. In the name of Jesus Christ, go in peace. Return with your testimonies in Jesus' mighty name. Happy Father's Day to everyone once again. Hallelujah. Make sure you give your father a call. Amen. And say happy Father's Day to them. Not just a call, a call with substance. Are you hearing me? Be a blessing. And if your father is no longer there, look for someone that is a father. The father figure and be a blessing to them. The Lord bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Surely, all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen.
praise the Lord. I'm more than a conqueror. 